Hello, I'm Graham Lewis, and in this short video, we're going to discuss scatter plots, the least squares line, how they come about, and why we can't uh, rearrange the least squares line to predict the other variable. So here we go. So here we've got a scatter plot. Now, what you choose to go on the uh, horizontal axis is really important. Traditionally, when statisticians were inventing regression, they came from science experiments. So the horizontal axis was truly independent, like you chose the time to measure uh, a chemical reaction. However, since then, statisticians have worked a lot with observations. So there are two sets of words that are used. Um, one is if you're doing a science experiment, uh, where it is a truly independent variable that you're choosing and it doesn't depend on anything, such as time usually, um, that's the, called the independent axes. And the vertical axes is called the dependent axes. However, when you're dealing in observations, such as we are here with the mileage of a car and the price, well, the mileage isn't really um, an independent variable. So better terms would probably be explanatory, it explains and response. So most high schools use the word independent and dependent, which is where regression traditionally came from. But actually better words are probably explanatory and response. OK, so now uh, let's talk about um, our actual scatter plot. So you have to be really careful what you put on each axis. Um, have a quick look at this scatter plot. We've got the mileage of the car in thousands of uh, miles, so 30 here represents 30,000 miles, the odometer reading, and we have the price of the car in thousands of dollars, so 15.0 is $15,000. So we can see generally as the mileage increases here, the price is going down. And how is that relationship? Is it linear or is it curved? To decide whether it's linear or curve, one thing I like to do is draw train tracks around it and consider if your train tracks are parallel or not. If we've got there parallel train tracks, it's a good indication that we have a linear relationship. I think this is suitable for a linear relationship. So whenever you describe a scatter plot, you need always three things. The direction, in this case it's negative, it's going down. The strength of relationship, well, there are other ways to measure strength, but for now I'm going to say it's moderately strong. But you will learn other ways to uh, measure the strength of a relationship. And what type of relationship? Is it linear? Is it curved? This one is definitely linear, so you can actually say um, it's a correlation, the type of relationship. So here I would say negative, that's the direction, moderately strong correlation and as soon as I use the word correlation I mean linear correlation means it's a linear relationship okay so now we're going to look at this and we're actually going to try and find um, a good um, line of best fit we're going to try and find the least squares line now the theory behind the least squares line is if I just get rid of those train tracks imagine I choose my line to be there straight line. The theory is I want all of these distances, these vertical distances, to be as small as possible when I move my line around. So those vertical distances I want to be as small as possible, but we need to make them positive. So let's just make them into squares. So I'll have lots of areas. So this vertical distance on this dot makes a square and I want my the sum of all of the squares to be as small as possible. So I'm going to now use a uh, computer package to demonstrate this. So here we have the points in our computer package um, called Fathom. And I'm now going to add what's called a movable line. So if I add the movable line, I can move this line around to hopefully best represent our data. So if I'm trying to move this around... Uh, something like that say okay so that's not bad I don't think all right so now I want all of those vertical distances to be as small as possible the package will show me the squares so I click on show the squares on the package I've got all of the squares showing the vertical distance and you've got the sum of squares down here look at the moment it's at 1.313 see if I make the line much worse notice that my line there is much worse not fitting the points and the sum of the squares gets very big so I want to move the line around until I've got the smallest sum of squares. And I've got the very best line. So two point, let's 
it? That's not bad, is it? There. Oh, getting better. Oh, even better. 1.2. And then going back up. So maybe about 1.256. I'll leave it there for now. So there's my attempt. 1.244 is my sum of squares. But clearly, there must be a best line. One that theoretically can work be worked out. Now, I'm not going to go into the theory here behind it, but there is, and it's called the least squares line. It's called the least squares line because it's the line which is the least for all of the sum of those squares. Now, my line, I had 1.244. The least squares line is 1.194. So I was pretty close, but the least squares line is better than mine. So I'm going to remove the movable line. I'm going to now remove the squares because we don't need those now. And we have the best line of best fit, which is called the least squares line. And that was the theory of it. Remember that the least squares line was caused by finding the vertical distances and making squares. That's going to be really important later in this video. So here we have the least squares line. And you can see that I've actually marked two points. The minimum here for this point in terms of the mileage and the maximum this point in terms of mileage. The minimum mileage of my data is 19.1, which is 19,100 miles. And the maximum is 45.9, 45,900 miles. Now that's really important. We fitted this line with the data we had. We don't have any data smaller than 19,100 miles. We don't have any data larger than 45,900 miles. This means that we cannot predict what's happening outside our data range. We have no idea of the price of cars which have done fewer than 19.1 uh, are larger than 45.9. The relationship could be completely different. For instance, there's nothing to say that we thought it was linear here and maybe here it goes back up again. We don't know, so we must not predict. So we're only allowed to predict inside the range for our odometer reading, and that's called interpolation, so predicting inside. So let's do an example. Let's imagine we've got a car which has done 30,000 miles, so 30 in this graph, and we can use our formula. So the formula, which is written at the bottom here, I've copied out nicely. So the price would be minus 0 0.0628 times the 30 plus 17.25. So I'll just work that out. So we get a price of 15.366, which means, of course, because that's in thousands of dollars, means $15,366. So our line of best fit, our least squares line, is predicting that if a car's done 30,000 miles, um, it will cost $15,366. Question. What if I wanted to predict the mileage of a car given its price? So imagine we had a car that cost $15,000. How many miles would we be expected to cover? Because maybe we want to do it the other way around. Maybe we have $15,000 to spend. What kind of mileage can we expect on the car? How many miles will it cover? So how would we do that? Some of you may be thinking, I'll rearrange this formula here. You would be completely mistaken. That would be a big mistake. Let's do it and I'll show you why. I'm going to do it in red for danger because you should never do this. So we're going to take this formula P equals minus 0 0.0628 mileage plus 17.25 and re rearrange it. So first thing I'm doing is going to minus 17.25 from both sides and then of course I'm going to divide both sides by minus 0 0.628 and I end up with minus 15.92 times the price plus 274.68. So that was my, would be my rearranged um, question. But remember at the beginning I said it was really important what you decided was on the horizontal axis, the explanatory axis or independent axis, and what was on the vertical axis, the in dependent axis or the response axis. So let's now do it the other way completely. So in this uh, scatter plot here, you can see I've swapped over the odometer and price. So this is now predicting um, the mileage reason for a given price. So if we had a car that's $15,000, uh, we can predict the mileage reading there by using the equation. Now I've copied here our rearranged equation here. 
and the correct equation which has been given here, notice that they are in fact different. So it would be wrong to use this rearranged equation. It's not correct. I'm going to cross it out. We would have to use the correct equation there. So hopefully that's convinced you that you can't just rearrange an equation. You have to do the whole scatter plot again. Now, some of you, I hope, are thinking, why? Why hasn't it worked? And the answer lies in how we actually worked out our least squares line. So if we go back up here, remember that when I go back to the original one here, we found the vertical distance and we made it a square. And we added up all of those squares and we minimized it. Now what happens to that vertical distance when I swap over odometer and price? That vertical distance is a price difference, isn't it? If I swap over the price and odometer, that vertical distance becomes a horizontal distance. And so I'm not actually finding the same minimum squares. My squares are completely different. So that's why it won't work. So hopefully that's convinced you that if you ever want to do uh, predict the other variable, you have to actually do the whole exercise again and from the beginning. There's no shortcuts. You can't just rearrange equation. This, of course, means that if I had this equation here, I can only predict mileage. So I, if I'm given a price of $15,000, yes, I can find the mileage. If I have the mileage equals 30,000 miles, I cannot use this equation. I would have to go back to the equation where um, the mileage is on the correct axes. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that you found that interesting. And if you liked it, please look at some of my other videos.